Hello, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you these specimen cards that I've been working on. I know I'm not the only one uh, doing these things. I've seen other creators doing uh, similar specimen cards, um, but uh, I'm doing it my style. And my style means that I'm using or reusing materials to make uh, this card. So I'm using old book pages that I'm going to show you and some of my science magazine pages that I've modified. You can watch those videos. I think I have one video on how I show how I modify text pages. I'm going to link it here. And so you can take a look. And so that's what I'm using for that. I've been making them in this shape of a file folder, but they're just cards. They're not folders. Um, I just like the tab in there. And let's get started. So for this big one, um, I'm going to show you quickly. I don't think we're going to have time to make one of these today. And also, I don't have one uh, big image anymore. But for this one, I used an index card like this one. So all I did was to cut it here. Um, I guess I trim it on the side a little bit. Um, and I cut it to give it that tab shape on top. And then I distressed it because it's clearly too white. And I put the magazine pages and this book image on there plus some stickers and stuff like that. So this is an easy way that you can make uh, cards, journaling cards. So I, I, my goal is to put this uh, insect specimen cards in my blue journal. And so I'll have journaling space on the back. And the small ones, I've been making them with cardstock. This is a textured cardstock that I have from many years ago. And I made a template to cut them like this. So I'll show you the template. So this is my template. I used a popsicle box to make this. Um, you can use any cardboard or cardstock that you have. And, and you can do any measurements you want. I like this size for me, which is about, what is it? I'm going to try to give you the measurements in inches. <laughs> so this is, oh no, I can't. <laughs> Whatever that is, three and one eighth by two inches. And the tab is about three quarters. So that would be like one centimeter. I think my tab is one centimeter tall. And this is eight by five centimeters. So I work in centimeters. It's easier for me. And so that's why my measurements, I feel like m my measurements in inches don't make any sense. So let's start by making one of these cards. Here is my cardstock. I used to buy like big sheets of cardstock because I was, I, I've always loved to make cards. Um, and so I have plenty of this. This is like very old cardstock. So I cannot even tell you when I bought this because it's been too long. I should have done this before pre preparing for my video, but honestly, I just, got home from work and I said, I want to make a video. <laughs> I didn't prepare anything beforehand, but so I'm just gonna get a piece of this and I'll save the rest. So this is kind of the Manila color. I don't know if you can tell. It's a extremely gloomy day again today. I have my ring light on, but there is basically not uh, sunlight. It's very dark outside and it's not even it shouldn't be this dark at this time um 
Oh, I'm going to use my template. I guess after you've made a few, you can use this as your template, but I'm going to just use this. So um, as you've seen, I've made the tops into different sides because if I flip my template, I have it into different locations. Uh, but you can also make the tab in the middle. I guess this time I'm going to make it on this side. And then I'm going to grab a pencil, line this up. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not actually, I'm trying to line it up, but this edge is not straight. So, oops. And then I just trace it roughly. We're going to trim, I mean, we're going to cut it. So don't worry about being perfect. The line's going to go away, but this will give you the general shape. And that's how I use a template. I mean, I'm sure you've used templates before. And because I'm a really bad scissor cutter, I'm going to use my trimmer to cut this, following the lines that I've already uh, marked. I think I need to do that all the way, but that's what we're going to do. Um, this one, what did I say? I said five so it's gonna be six so actually i can measure this this is six centimeters tall oh well it's okay <laughs> and then it was five so i'm gonna try to just guys i went over it but it's okay i said this doesn't have to be perfect so it's not gonna be perfect um I'll, I'll show you <laughs> what happened. So I'm using my trimmer to cut my tab as well, which, oops, something just fell on my desk, which is probably not a good idea because I just, I cut way, I went over that line. The other ones I did the same thing, but I was a lot more careful and I didn't do that. So I'm just gonna go with my scissors and I don't mind if this one, this tab is smaller. So I'm just gonna try to uh, make them a little bit even because you know what? They don't have to be the same. So this is gonna be your base. Um, you can do whatever shape you want, but this is the shape that I chose. And for my specimens, uh, we're going to use book pages. So I have this old encyclopedia um, from the 70s, I think. And I have the letter I. So the letter I has a section about insects. Here. So I've been taking um, images from here. Unfortunately, when I bought this book, someone had already taken a lot of the insect images, which is kind of sad because I'm sure they were nice insect <laughs> images. But I was still able to recover this one. So we have this one. And on the back, there is this big insect. So I have to decide whether I'm gonna use this big insect or the smaller ones. But I think today we're gonna do a butterfly. Let's let's make a butterfly specimen card. It is um, very gloomy, so I love butterflies. They're colorful. So far I have a bumblebee and a tumble box. And so for the background, we're gonna, I'm going to use these pages. Um, these ones have been painted with watercolors and I really like the effect that they have. Um, I try to simulate coffee marks on this one. It's really nice. So these are um, scientific papers from a magazine that were going to be thrown away, so I rescued them and I've been using them for many projects. And so you, here you can see that for both of these, I used a graph and I put my bug, my insect inside the graph. 
Um, that's not how we would graph something, but this is fantasy. This is not real science. And But I think it's cool to have some, you know, graphs and numbers along with your, here as well, numbers and the graphs along with your specimen. So that's like we're measuring. That's, when I'm working on something like this, I'm thinking, what does it mean? Are we measuring this specimen? So that's what we're going to do. Oh, and in both of these cases, I have text on the back. So I guess I'm going to recreate that here. So let's get let's get the pieces together. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tear this graph here. If you don't have graph, you can use other things. I'm sure you you're not gonna have graphs. Although if you go maybe to some local thrift stores, maybe you can find magazine. I found um some scientific magazines and others like National Geographic and things like that in in uh in thrift stores. So maybe it is possible for you to find things like this. And also encyclopedia books. They do have sometimes graphs. I don't know if I'm oh here, see this one has a graph with the numbers. So you could you could use this, you could cut here and use that uh, or a table. A table is very, this table is very scientific <laughs> looking. So yeah, if you, if you want to do like a scientific theme, you can for sure get that from, a, um, from an encyclopedia. So I think I'm going to use this. I think I'm going to use all of these for this one. And what other part? I'm going to, I think I want to use a piece of this. I guess I'll use this. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. You don't have to cover the whole thing. Um, here's where you play along and you know do your do your thing basically that's what I do I just do my thing so oh and we're gonna cut the butterfly so this one uh so I guess the insects were separated by fun by what they do so this one it was in the help plants category, so I think I'm going to also use the help plants, but I'm not going to have it attached to the image. And I'm going to try, hmm, I kind of like this to be a square, but that's not going to be possible. This is going to be an interesting looking specimen. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I want this to be old rough looking and not necessarily like something perfect and neat so if you're new here and you've never seen the science magazines that i'm talking about these are the ones um and i've been using them for many things including to protect my my surface <laughs> from the glue So uh, let's start inking and gluing. So I've been using archival ink uh, by Ranger in the potting soil for this. It's a nice dark brown. Cut it. It's so dark in here. Okay, how is that? I. I increased my <laughs> the intensity of my light because I cannot see anything. It's so and I don't want to turn my my ceiling lights because I don't like how that looks on video. Why is that so dark? Okay, so that's that. 
Oh, and before we glue, I need to distress this. This is too too new looking. So uh, this is bothering me a little bit. I think I need, yeah, maybe. Okay, I like that top better now. Okay, so what I did with the other ones was to go around the edges. And then I also went uh, over, not over the whole thing because um, the center doesn't have to be dark because that's where we're gonna have the rest of the, like that's where we're gonna glue our specimen. But I want the edges, like all this part to be dark. So I'm using glue stick for this. So I'm gonna glue. Is this the part? Yeah. So the text part goes first. This portion of the text is the references. So there's also like a lot of numbers. I don't know. I think that makes them, makes it look interesting so I give yeah. do I need more no no I don't need more glue there so now um I think I'm gonna try to do this and we're gonna put the butterfly like here Well, the text is not going to be visible. I want to keep the letter B. I like that. And I want to keep the axis. So should I? I also like that. <laughs> Decisions. Oh my God, it's pouring. It's raining a lot. Um, I think I'm going to trim the top a little bit. Try not to get rid of my B. You know, I'm not, I'm not always successful when I try to do this type of thing. Well, I told you. Maybe I'll try to get a little bit of this. Yeah. So we're gonna ink this one again. I really like how the watercolors look like in this. It's kind of very messy. So that one's gonna go in there. Maybe like this, so we have some of the writing on top that it's gonna be visible. And now we, um, I'm gonna ink the butterfly. I know that's not a, it's not a square anymore, but that's okay. We're gonna deal with it. So I want this to be kind of like this, or in the middle of the graph. And I think I'm gonna put it. I, it's okay. I think it's okay if I cover the coffee stain because there is another coffee stain there. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it in there, or maybe a little bit higher, like this. So we see a little bit of the graph. Maybe like this. So this is how it's looking. So far, and uh, here I've been putting insect in both of them. So I think, oh, I said I wanted to also include the help plants part. So maybe that's this one will go here, there. So I'm gonna trim this and then I'm gonna search for an insect ward and I'll be back. Okay, so um, I 
chose that insect word from the encyclopedia. Uh, which I have here. And then I have the help plants. So I want to put the help plants like there. I think I'm going to try to, <laughs> it's not straight. Okay, I'm going to try to ink the edges lightly because I don't want to cover the whole word. Just a little bit. And then glue it. Okay, so that's going to go in there. So the butterfly helps plants. And uh, the word insect is going to be the label of our card. So that's going to go in the tab. Oops, so I'm putting that there. Oh no, it moved. <laughs> it keeps moving. I think I put the glue on the wrong side, but oh my god. I'm gonna try again. There it is. So it says insect, and we have our insect and you know measurements of the insect, whatever it is. <laughs> Whatever those measurements are, I have no idea what that graph is about. So now it's time for decorating. I've been stamping and putting stickers. Um, so that's something we can do. I actually, I have this. Um, these are the only numbers I have. Well, not only these numbers, only this type of stamps. These are this. How would you call them? They're rubber. They're not rubber. You know, the, the ones that are sticky, like jelly. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Um, so I kept, it's very annoying to put the numbers on the block. So I just kept using the same number, but maybe I'll use a different number. I have zero, zero one six seven. So maybe let's do zero one six for this one. So we can do it there. And I've been doing it in red. It, red actually looks good. So let me find my red ink. Okay, I found my inks. But also I found something that I wanted to show you. Okay, so you don't have encyclopedias. You don't have any books. You don't have... Uh, you cannot buy specimen paper or like... Uh, or die cuts. And you don't know where to find insects. Look what I found. <laughs> I've had this sitting on my desk for a while. This is a this is a tissue box from Target. And yeah, it's the up and up brand from Target. And look at all those insects there. I've been I've been saving this because I've been meaning to use it for something. They are cute insects as if uh and they have a face, you know. <laughs> Eyes and a smile, so they're not very like realistic looking, but you can still use them. You can cut them out. You is that a spotted lantern thing? I think it is. Well, I mean, it, I have a love hate relationship with them. <laughs> but look at the 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 beetles here, or that bee. You can cut it. Oh, the ladybug. You can cut them and use these. Why not? So you don't have to buy already made ephemera there is ephemera everywhere like honestly i'm just seeing everywhere okay another thing i'll show you i received oops i received this in the mail today this is from my uh, local symphony orchestra and it's the program for the for for the holiday season look look at all these things i'm going to cut them out with my circle punches that, and you can just cut that and that would be a nice decoration for your for, for your um journal pages there is really paper decorative paper and ephemera everywhere like you receive it 
you receive it every day in the mail. I promise you that you receive plenty of junk mail and it is all paper that can be used for so many things. So don't feel the need to buy stuff when it comes to your home for free. So that's, that's just outside of this parenthesis, end of parenthesis. So I got my red ink and I'm just going to stamp this number. If I were more creative, I'd use a different number, but it's okay. I need to get better number stamps. Probably wooden ones. I'm not a fan of how this one stamp, but it's okay because this is going to be, you know, old looking. These were made, I'm thinking these were made in the 1800s, so nothing's going to look nice. And then I'm going to use some stickers from my... Lately, my favorite sticker pack. I've been using this for so many things. There are so many stickers. And there's so many nice things that you can use. So, I'm going to go through them and I'll be back. Okay, I think I have them. Um, I think I want to put that butterfly there. Although... I had a better one that, you, that I used last night. So uh, last night I was decorating this envelope using my scraps of paper. Um, I'll show you. I think I want to show you this in another video, maybe. Um, so because I want this uh, type of pockets to go with my insect card. So I wanted to make it look uh, the same way. And I used that one. And I think that's the one I wanted to use the, here now. Um, but I used it last night. <laughs> and of course, as I said, I didn't plan for today. Yeah, we're going to make it work. So, um, I'm going to, I don't want to get, I don't want to cover, oops. Okay. It just went there. I cannot remember. <laughs> I said, I don't want to cover the bee. It didn't cover the bee, but it went over insect a little bit. And that's okay. Then I'm going to trim the excess plastic. And since it says help plants, uh, I wanted to put like um, a green in there, but maybe that fern is too long. Maybe I like this one that it's very muted, muted so it's not going to look too bright. You can also stamp. I've been stamping on the other ones. Um, I'll show you. Okay, so there it goes over the other one, which is fine. It's not a problem. So I've been doing like those seal stamps. Um, like this one too. So maybe I'll do that one here just to keep with the theme instead of putting another sticker because I was thinking putting that sticker in there, but um, I'm going to stamp like I did with the other. So I have this nature pattern stamp set for uh, many years ago. So I like this one. And just there. It doesn't have to be a full, actually. I kind of want to do another one on the other side. Oh, that looks cool. I think a little stamp like that adds so much to a project. And it's like, okay, this has been certified to be correct. Okay, so that is my um, project for today. It's very simple. And I hope it's a quick video. Okay, so this is the one we've made today. Um, using old book pages images from all books and um, text pages and this graph that you can get anywhere. Honestly, I think you should all get uh, an encyclopedia because you can get all of that from an encyclopedia. And so we have one specimen card, the butterfly, um, a bumblebee, and a beetle, like, which is a tumblebug. So I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.